I'm Jim Hodge, pastor at Aldersgate United Methodist Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Welcome to worship. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we want you to know that Aldersgate is a community where all are welcome to participate fully in the life of the congregation, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, special needs, economic or marital status, or faith history. We live and work honoring our vision statement of grow in love, seek justice for all creation. It is my honor and privilege to welcome Reverend Bill Johnson as our feature preacher today as we celebrate our ministries with Northview Public Schools. We work together for all kids utilizing the gifts in our congregation by building relationships and partnering within the school to assist in creating a healthy community. This is a mission with as much or more than a mission to the schools. It is relational, not transactional. It is hand in hand, not handed down. It's a marathon, not a sprint. I hope our worship time today will inspire you to engage in Aldersgate's Northview Public School mission in some way. So let's get to getting. Now this for all the women, men, girls and boys out there and all the ships at sea. Thank you to those who have responded to our appeal with gifts to the Northview Band program and expressions of gratitude for the teachers in their lives. If you haven't had an opportunity to make a contribution but would like to do that, please send your gift to Aldersgate United Methodist Church earmarked Northview and the funds will be directed toward the Northview Band Boosters along with our prayers for a successful year. Have you ever asked yourself, self, what does it mean, really mean to be a part of God's vision for my local community? And why, oh why, is this the key part of pursuing Aldersgate's visions to grow in love and seek justice for all creation? Well, good news. You're invited to participate in a study program beginning this week called Taking Church to the Community. Contact Matt Albin to learn more or sign up for a small group. This just in. Today's worship includes a blessing of backpacks and devices during prayer time. So teachers, parents, and students you're invited to have those items at the ready to receive God's blessing. But wait, there's more. Today's worship also includes a virtual prayer walk of all Northview Public Schools. Let the God praising begin. Thanks again for worshiping with us. Now, light one if you got one. And let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day of worship celebrating our schools. Thank you for the opportunity to gather again in this virtual way to learn more about you. Help us to put aside all our distractions so we can listen and be touched by your truth. Help all those who lead us through our worship today. Bless us each one with your care and kindness. Amen.
For children's time this week, some of our Sunday school teachers and youth leaders are offering a blessing as we start the new school year. Dear Lord, we are blessed to have the privilege of a system of education that benefits all of our children. Lord, wrap your loving arms around our children and our grandchildren as they return to school and wrap your arms around the teachers, administrators, support people, and volunteers who are called to work in our education system. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, I'm Judy Vandersward, and I'd like to offer a prayer for the students, parents, and teachers uh, as we begin this new school year. Students, I'll start with you. I pray that God will ease the anxiety you may be feeling about going back to school, um, especially among this, amongst this pandemic. I pray for your safety and that you'll have the necessary technology, the self-discipline, and the adult oversight to be successful this school year. Parents, I pray for wisdom for you in, in uh, choosing your options. I pray for your provisions physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. And teachers, oh Lord, grant them grace and discernment. I pray for wisdom from all the, the uh, district leaders and for the safety of all of the staff. I pray for community support, which is so important. All of this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, everyone. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for all of our ch Aldersgate children and youth. Thank you for all of the possibilities of a new school year. Please be with all of our kids and parents as we start off what will likely be a very unusual year. Amen. Dear loving God, we want to pray for our children at Aldersgate. You know us very well and you know them very well and you love them. And we want to pray for them as they start this school year, whether they're starting at home, or whether they're going into the building. We pray that it will be a good year. We pray for the teachers that teach them. So thank you for all that you have given to our children. And may we continue in our love for them as we support them through this school year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Two passages from scripture frame our worship today. Both readings are from Eugene Peterson's The Message. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse six. Point your kids in the right direction. When they're old, they won't be lost. The second reading comes from the letter to the followers of the risen Christ in Galatia, the sixth chapter, verse nine. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all. 
starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. May God bless this reading of the Holy Word. First, let's pray. O oh Lord, at the start of the school year, a year like no other, we remember your words, you are making all things new. And new things can be exciting, and they can be scary, and they can be wonderful, and they can be confusing. We know you're always with us, no matter how we find ourselves navigating the landscape that is education in the year 2020. You are with us every day, all the time. So we will look for your presence. We'll listen for your word each and every day. In Jesus, the master teacher's name. Amen. Greetings. The Old Testament wisdom of Proverbs 22.6 and the New Testament counsel of St. Paul to the church in Galatia form the foundation for some reflection on the Aldersgate mission with the Northview Public Schools. Through centuries of Judeo-Christian history, people of faith have taken the words to heart, applying as much as possible the guidance found in them. Point your kids in the right direction and, to paraphrase, when doing good, don't get overworked. 
pace yourselves. And if you don't give up or quit, the harvest will come in due time. The words may have emerged in an ancient day, but they haven't lost their punch. And you and I are just as important as those who live out those words in the year 2020 as ever. The words from Proverbs and Galatians were offered to communities of people trying to preserve a tradition handed down to them in both cases in the midst of times of turmoil and distress. And yet, they became benchmarks upon which the faithful could build a future of hope. They were carved out of a relationship with God that taught dependence on the promise that if they remain faithful, in spite of cruel oppression from outside influences, they could count on God's presence through all the highs and lows of life. 2020 has been a year of turmoil and distress too. And though the circumstances are different than those that our ancestors faced, the stress and discouragement and even despair has been like nothing ever faced by most of America. Certainly, there are those memories of Spanish flu and a depression and wars and economic distress. Those could tell us similar stories from their own experience. But for the most part, we who are living through this nightmare have just never seen the likes of it before. So, without dwelling any more on the current conditions, let's just say others have been where we are, more or less. And what we're seeing today, as terrible as it is, is not a brand new phenomenon in history, and surely not anything new to God. I hope there's some cause for reassurance in that thought. And at the very least, there is occasion to remind ourselves of some other words from Paul in the message version of his words. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, to, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love. I think that about covers it. <laughs> So let's get on with the main thing today, to reflect not on how terrible things are, but how much God loves us and will help us through every time and every place. The Aldersgate mission with the Northview Public Schools is an engagement with the world that exists nearby our church meeting place. Seven instructional facilities and an administrative office building the people who inhabit the spaces, the buses and drivers that transport students each day, the people who prepare meals, the volunteers on the playgrounds, the, the ones who clean daily and make repairs, the paper pushers and the teacher who's, who are teachers who are foot soldiers in the bunkers. <laughs> and now this year, we include the tools of learning that include electronic devices we didn't know would exist a few years ago, personal protective equipment that we thought was reserved for hospitals and urgent care centers, and of course the students, the parents, the guardians who make up our school population. We're talking about some number north of 10,000 people when you think about it, and that's a small town. And that is our mission field. It's important to say that mission in our day has a different face than the one that many of us have known. It used to be that mission meant sending people to other lands, foreign or domestic, or at the very least, sending dollars in support of missionaries and their work. Today, the changing culture around us has placed mission on our doorstep. And that's not breaking news, but let's just name it here so we remember what we're talking about. And when I say doorstep, you can't get much closer than 
adjacent property lines and structures with names like Crossroads Middle School, Northview, or North Oakview Elementary, Northview High School, and the Northview Administrative Offices, all visible from our church building. And that means an aerial photograph would show that we are neighbors of the highest order with four of the eight facilities housing the Northview schools. We quite literally share an area of real estate in Plainfield Township. We are neighbors. Well, that's all introduction leading to what I hope will be a call to mission for our congregation. Working together for all kids is the vision that we hammered out in 2013. It means using the gifts God has placed in our congregation, but also building relationships with the schools so that we are partners in creating a more healthy community. Mission with is the way we like to put it these days, as opposed to mission to. We'll hear more about that in the month of September when our worship series turns to taking the church to community. Suffice it to say, the nature of our mission is relational, not transactional. It's hand in hand, not handed down. And most importantly, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So what do the writer of Proverbs and St. Paul have to say to us? How might we point kids in the right direction? And how might we apply those helpful instructions to not allow ourselves to get fatigued in the marathon? So that the harvest, the good crop God has planned, will be the result of our mission. Earlier in his letter to the Galatians, Paul gave a list of virtues he called fruit of the Spirit, namely love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, these fruits are really all about relationships and how we might manage life together. They're a way to fulfill a call to mission by bearing one another's burdens. What Paul is describing is a mutual sharing of life. It means assisting one another and evaluating only yourself. Do what is given us to do on behalf of our neighbor, as God did and does what needs to be done for us. By encouraging his hearers not to grow tired, Paul reminds us that it is not easy as a way to live to be gracious and to persevere, to be cheerful and refuse to judge who's worthy of help and who is not. This is our call to mission, living a life that leads the Spirit's presence surrounding and infusing it. It needs the presence of other people so infused to assist us when we wobble and run out of steam. In a word, we are supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves and apply those other clarion requirements of Micah's prophecy to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Eight years ago, following the tragic shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut, Aldersgate's pastor at the time, Lori Haller, wrote this. God yearns for us to imitate Christ in our thoughts and words and actions. God goes so far as to invite us to be God's representatives on this earth. It's up to us to create a world of peace, mutual understanding, respect, and inclusivity. She says, I am awestruck by the millions of acts of kindness that take place every day in our world. They far outshadow the mass killings. She believed quite rightly that church and community can be a force for good with the hope of preventing those future tragedies. And the story of Aldersgate and Northview and our partnership began with those words, and it's grown from a task force of three 
to the participation of over 100 people in a variety, namely 12 different activities and events where our congregation has teamed up with Northview to build a better community. Is there any more crucial time in education than this moment, the fall of the 2021 school year? Is there any more significant application of the biblical mandate to respond as Esther did? for such a time as this. It takes a church to point kids in the right direction, and it takes a partnership so that we don't let ourselves get fatigued while doing good. God has a harvest waiting, a crop to produce. And I'm not just talking about a crop of students. I mean a community that offers teaching and learning, yes, but much more. The harvest that awaits us is a healthy and strong, courageous and safe, encouraging and wholesome environment where students and teachers, principals and support staff, kitchen staff and bus drivers, custodians and office, and office administrators, volunteers and employees alike work together for all kids. Here's the best news. When we partner with our schools, we aren't just helping them. We are helping ourselves to grow in faith. We're deepening our own discipleship as followers of Jesus. We're the disciples that Jesus is making for the transformation of the world. So will you join me in this mission? Working together for all kids. Teacher, I wrote this song for you To thank you for every smile I know you had a lot to do I'm glad that you paused a while You took time to listen and to hear To laugh and just be there I heard the lesson loud and clear I matter to you, you care Cause when you reach out and you touch me with your heart Then you hold on becoming in your hands And though you're with me just a while today
It's prayer time now, and we have a few requests today. Here's a request from the Meeson, Weta, and Procopy families. Please be in prayer for great nephew and cousin, Samuel, that the doctors find the cause for his illness and that God and the doctors can heal him. Another request comes from Wendy Clark. Please hold our friend Peter Mosier in your prayers. Peter was admitted to ICU, placed on a ventilator for non-COVID symptoms after becoming very ill. He is being treated for a sinus infection that traveled to his brain, causing pockets of infection and numerous blood clots. He is in serious condition after undergoing brain surgery. Please hold Peter, his wife Grace, and two young sons in your prayers. And we have an update on our friend Phyllis Robinson. Phyllis is home and continuing her rehabilitation. Byron is very grateful for the continued prayers and says cards for Phyllis would be welcome. We also remember our homebound members, Mary Lou Arnold, Joanne Ensley, Eleanor Howison, Lois Jessup, Barb Libby, and Arlene Parker. Parents, kids, grandparents, and teachers, now is the time to have those backpacks and devices at the ready. Let's pray. At school and at home, God, you call us to share your good news of love, justice, and peace with a world in need. You have gifted us with rich resources from scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. Gifts that have empowered people to develop new ways of listening to the voices of many others, attending to their interests and concerns, connecting with diverse peoples and groups, and engaging them as people of faith. So we ask for your blessing on our digitally integrated ministries and on the many electronic devices we use to learn at school and at home and to love and serve our neighbors in a changing world. God, be with students, teachers, administrators, custodians, parents, grandparents. Be with them and help them as they begin a new year of learning, teaching, growing, and serving. May their minds and pencils be sharp. May their lunches always be filled with good stuff. And the erasers help them remember that mistakes are okay because they are the most important part of the learning process. Thank you, God, for glue sticks and homework folders and notebooks and libraries and backpacks and the gift of curiosity and your wisdom that is all around us and lives within us. Bless these backpacks and they who fill and carry them this year. We also pray for those we've named before you and those who remain on our hearts and minds. We have so many things to pray for, God. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are worried about getting sick. We pray for doctors and nurses and medical professionals. We pray for those who are sad and grieving someone who has died. We pray for scientists. We pray for politicians. We pray for our family. We pray for our friends. We pray for all the other things in our hearts and on our minds. And we end our prayer by saying, thank you, God. Thank you for the small blessings of every day. Thank you for hearing us when we pray. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the love we can be for 
and with others. In Christ's name, amen. Every year since 2014, the faith community of Aldersgate Church lifts up our prayer for the roughly 3,500 students, faculty, administration, and support staffs who spend their days mostly inside the seven school buildings and the administrative offices at Northview Public Schools. This year, we extend our prayers beyond the buildings to the teaching and learning that will take place through the wonders of digital technology. More than ever this year, we'll test the patience and skills and stamina of our educators and students alike, as well as the parents. Yet, we believe God will use our schools to continue to unleash the wonder of learning, that nothing will be lost in the progress and the growth of students in a challenging world today. We will visit each school facility and offer prayer at the eight sites, knowing that God is at work through all who make these buildings their home, most of them for roughly eight hours a day or more. We begin here at the administrative offices for Northview Public Schools. Let us pray. Oh God, each day people come to work in this building to serve our community in special ways through their administrative gifts. We pray for them and the work they do that you will use their knowledge and talents to lead our schools with excellence, with compassion and with commitment to the more than 3,200 students and more than 400 staff. God, give them wisdom, vision, and fortitude to stand the tests of our unusual times in education, that our Northview Public Schools, led by Dr. Scott Korpak, will be beacons of light and hope 
for all who live in this school district. Amen. Creator God, you are like a mother hen who would nurture and protect her offspring from harm. So wrap your arms around the children who come here to learn and those who learn from home. Bless the teachers who must add to their tasks in the classroom and study. The protection of their students. Bless the support staff Principal Tony Quinn, here at West Oakview. We also ask prayers for the teachers of the field school, Jenna Rixey and Matt Fennick, whose alternative approach to education lead the children in ways before not known. In these days of daily threats to their health and well-being. May the students who attend, whether inside the school or outside at the field school, have a measure of grace in each moment that their work be done in safety, reassuring any who bring anxiety to learning, maybe for the first time in their lives. Oh God, here at East Oakview Elementary School, we pray your blessing on Principal Danielle Stanley and her staff as they continue to lead children like the others with daily threats all around to their health and well-being. We pray your measure of grace for her as well, that her work be done in safety and re reassuring her that any who bring anxiety to learning may for the first time in their lives find hope in a new setting never before faced. In your name we pray. Amen. And oh God, many years ago, North Oakview Elementary School opened their doors to the congregation at Aldersgate as a new church faith community began. And now we return our blessing to Principal Jason Hugenstein, his staff, students, and parents, as we pray for their well-being in these difficult days. Pour out your love on all who use this building daily and make it their home each day throughout the school year. For all this, we give you thanks and we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Ever vigilant, watcher over all your works, bless our middle schools, crossroads, and highlands, where students in fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth grades experience turmoil under normal conditions. We know that preteen and early teenage years are explosive enough without added stress. So we pray you'll speak a word of peace to Principal Jerry Klikotka, his staff and support staff, custodians and kitchen staff, bus drivers, parapros. We pray for calm nerves, steady minds, and encouraging hearts, open to the needs of students, whether in the classroom or at home. Likewise, O oh God, we pray for the students at Highlands Middle School, Principal Jamie Vermont, his staff and support staff, the custodians and kitchen staff, the bus drivers and the parapros, and we pray for the parents. For calm nerves and steady minds and encouraging hearts to open the needs of all. Bring them the peace that passes understanding May students and leaders alike find new hopes unfolding, new dreams emerging, new insights to reawaken their call to serve with the gifts that you've bestowed upon them all. May this year bring not merely survival, but thriving and new growth for all. In your light 
that guides every path. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, the high school years are filled with a mixture of challenges that are both emotional and academic. Students begin in early adolescence and emerge four years later at the crest of adulthood. This year, the students, teachers, counselors, administrators, and support staff are all faced with unique circumstances never faced before. Whether their experience is modified classrooms, online learning, outdoors, career preparation, or we hope one day athletic competition and performing arts. We pray your blessing upon them as they strive in knowledge and understanding so that students continue these years of growth ready to contribute to a world continually changing and calling for them to adapt and give the best they have to make the world better. And, O oh God, for the students and the teachers at Northview Next, where fashioning an education in an alternative way brings new challenges each day, we pause to remember them. We ask your blessing as those who must meet the challenges do so in every moment of their lives. Be with all who enter this building and who live in the world ready to take it on as students and learners and as people ready to face the world. Keep all of them safe and healthy each day, wherever they may find themselves, we pray. Amen. At the same time that we pray for our Northview schools, we pay tribute to Aldersgate people, present and former, who are now living and who have been educators through the years. Lorna Brown, Tom Brown, Ellen Brubaker, Judy Kerr, Gary Dickerson, Pam Dickerson, Brent Dickerson, Lori Elliott, Chuck Frederick, Kathy Hodge, Lynn Jamison, Judy Johnson, Linda Liberto, Kathy Moss, Ann Nelson, Joyce Price, Ann Reinard, John Reinard, Kath Spittler, Bob Vanderswart, Judy Ver Vanderswart, Dorothy Watt, Jan Wilkes, Dave Wiltsey, Marge Wiltsey, Rick Wiltsey. May God's blessing accompany these as well who have devoted their lives to the education of young people through the years of service that they gave sacrificially often, but always with a heart for learning and teaching. Our church is proud of our legacy of education and educational leaders offered to this community. By God's grace, we hope we'll continue to do that as the years ahead unfold. And in this particularly difficult year, we even more so appreciate the dedication and the sacrifice of all who have given both their lives, their incomes, their hearts to service of our Lord in education. Amen. Deep heartfelt thanks and kudos to Reverend Bill Johnson for his message this morning. 
and for his wonderful leadership in our Northview Public School Ministries. I encourage you to consider what you can do to get involved. And thank you for joining us today and to all those who support the ongoing ministry at Aldersgate. If you'd like to make a financial gift, you can do so by going online on our website at graldersgate.org or mailing your gift to 4301 Ambrose Avenue Northeast, Grand Rapids 49525. So may your day be filled with joy and gladness. May you be kind today. May you be at peace today. May you know you are loved today by God and your family. May you hold that love in your heart today and every day. And whenever and wherever you get a chance, give it away to someone else. Amen. <laughs>